I am the Esperanza 243. You are here to listen and or watch me read a book aloud, a book that I have written, a book I call Musketeer Power. This is part two. Wow. Okay. So this is some pretty crazy stuff, right? Oh my gosh. We are on chapter two. Not part two, but chapter two of Musketeer Power. Now, if you haven't noticed, the first, if you didn't notice, uh, in the first chapter, I only focused on one woman. So, well, so I think you already know how it's going to be, at least for the first four chapters. And then after that, we'll see. Um, but what happened in the previous uh, video, though, the previous chapter was about Sophia Weiss, a Jewish woman who uh, in, who is a fashion designer, and she looks, and she ends up being, um, well, she wasn't summoned. She got a visit from a magician, and in this country, like, or at least this province part of the country, uh, they're not allowed to. Um, see wizards and magical people without having to pay. Otherwise, who knows what's going to happen, and you end up being responsible for for that for the repercussions instead of the m wizard or magical person who did it. So, I think that's pretty cool, and I'm actually really glad that I made that uh, hap uh, effective in this particular book because otherwise. <laughs> Sophia would have a little bit difficulty of going to Barol, which is the capital of the country, where she's going to be, uh, I don't think I explained it, but it is implied that she's going to be trained to become a musketeer. Who knows, though? So, we are here on chapter two. Uh, on to the next woman. And you are going to get really surprised by this one. Sorry, everyone. I just, I'm, it's going to be really distracting to me, but hopefully I'll be able to edit the audio out uh, so that you can't hear it. But my heater is really weird and making a sound that I don't think is good. I keep forgetting to call the maintenance people. Anyways, let's get on to the book, shall we? This is chapter two. Enchantress! Enchantress! Amari cried in excitement. She hurried up the path and through the opening doors. The young woman slowed down on the grand staircase so she wouldn't slip on the marble stairs. When she reached the office door, she contained herself before knocking. Enter, Amari, she said after chuckling. She watched the dancer walk in with grace. What is it, my dear? I did it! I finally did it, Enchantress! She cried excitedly. Well done, Miss Naven. I knew you would. Yoga finally did the trick, didn't it? Enchantress Viola surmised. Amari nodded with big eyes. You want another challenge, then? Of course, Enchantress! With a chuckle and a snap of the Enchantress's fingers, two teacups appeared. Amari took one before sitting down. Thank you, Enchantress. There is so much energy inside that should be calmed. Amari giggled and took a quiet sip. She sighed peacefully, as did the Enchantress after drinking different tea. The dancer received chamomile. This time it is not only your dancing to be tested, but more she said, after getting a vision. Before I give you the next challenge, I need you two fans. My fans, Enchantress, but why? Your destiny depends on them, she said as Amari gave them to her. Enchantress Viola Winters closed her hand and eyes while whispering a spell. When she finished, the fans glowed turquoise gaining a magical talent to trance its victims. You will not be alone, though, 
There are others to join your challenge. Who are they, Enchantress? You will find out. She paused and then smiled. Your challenge is in Varol. You must gain the skills of fighting. That thrilled the dancer. You may go, my dear. I hope to see you again. Thank you, Enchantress, she squealed. Oh, thank you so much. I can't wait to start. She took her fans and rushed out with excitement. I'm going to be a musketeer. Enchantress Viola chuckled before calling in the fourth travel traveler to be Macy Giardina. Amari skipped and hopped on her way to the theater. She knew she had to get her volunteer hours before leaving town, not to mention the last day of her dance show. Amari knew the theater would, wouldn't support her show very long. That visit with the Enchantress proved it had to end. Where's Amari? Someone called after she entered the theater. I'm here! She cried in excitement. She turned and accidentally bumped into one of the actors. Amari sighed dreamily when she saw who it was. Hi, Kuyo. She whispered. She watched him walk away without responding. Amari stepped lightly toward the stage. She was stopped by a young woman of twenty annuals. There you are. Why are you all sweaty? Her friend asked. I ran from the Enchantress's mansion. Kendra, she gave me my next challenge. She said excitedly. That is so cool. Kendra whispered. Tell me all about it during makeup. You're up in ten minutes. She did so. Amari's excitement came over them like infectious laughter. Wow, so you're going to Barol today? Yeah, and it's going to make me a musketeer. She raised her arms in excitement. I am so ready for anything. Ah! It's a good thing you have your volunteer work and show today, then. Her friend had finished the makeup. Okay, you're ready. Now go get dressed. You don't have much time. Amari had so much makeup on herself. She looked like a geisha but in red, then white. The following five minutes, she hurriedly dressed in a turquoise leotard, blue tutu, lavender tights, and yellow ballet slippers. We already know she has turquoise, and we know that Sophia has lavender. Hmm. I wonder what the other two colors are for. She stood at stage left while listening to her introduction by Kendra. All right, folks, I know you're looking forward to this dancer. She used to do this for a living every other day to entertain you all. Sadly, today is her last day, as she is traveling to Varol to complete one of her biggest dreams, to become a musketeer. She happens to be one of my greatest friends. Please welcome Amari Naben! Cheers, shouts, applause, and tons of praises echoed in the theater as the dancer walked on stage with the biggest grin on her face. She stopped on center stage, made a pose, and waited for her music to start. Once it did, silence washed over the audience as Amari moved gracefully. <laughs> <Ta -da. Ta -da! laughs> She did several adagio combinations, batons, battery, and so much more. Basically, Amari had done a bravura, a flashy, showy, and elaborate style of dancing that involved elaborate steps and style to her music. One of her moves wavered when a violin suddenly played during the music. The violin! She loved it. The violin added more flair to her music. But Amari never expected someone to do that. It lifted her spirits, though, so she gave impromptu moves immediately, the new wave of music flowing through her. Then she heard singing, singing, a most melodic and sweet voice that sent shivers down everyone's spine. That gave her music an even better flow. 
as her feet bounced and leaped in rhythm. Her next leap was higher than she had ever done. The audience fawned at the height. The singer and violinist continued on. Never did I think that that was right. This is how I live. The confidence in her singing grew while the music and violin played. Now tell me why did I ask? This is the life I wanted. Give me the right to never just don't tell me how to live. This is my life. The singer paused for a moment before vocalizing. She caught her breath as she continued singing. All my life, I've had to believe the wrong things. I know what to do. Don't tell me I can't do this. Don't tell me how to live my life. Don't place those doubts on me. Don't add your regrets. It's not my fault. I want this life. I want this life. You have changed my mind. Everything suddenly stopped with Amari breathing heavy after posing the attitude. Her raised leg bent and lifted in a 90 degree angle, the knee higher than the foot, one arm curved over her head, and the other extended to the side. The audience once again cheered, applauded, and gave tons of praises, echoing throughout the entire theater. With a pleasant sigh, Amari did her theatrical bow before leaving the stage on point. <laughs> that was incredible! Kendra exclaimed. Amari sighed in relief and excitement. I've never seen you dance so many complicated moves in one performance. Where's the singer? And that violinist. I want to thank them. They were the most wonderful additions I've ever heard. Her friend shook her head. I have no idea. They came from stage right and left. I didn't pay attention. Your dancing reaction gave a really strong effect on me. And from the sound of it to the audience as well. They laughed as they heard audience members shouting encore in unison. I'll take care of them. You go relax before your volunteer shift starts. After she dressed into her street clothes and removed the makeup, she added a turquoise scarf. Amari loved turquoise and always added the color to every outfit she wore, even while she worked. She was stopped when she headed to the box office. Wait, Amari! Zion called. The dancer turned toward him. She smiled as her heart beats a little faster. Oh. Hey, Zion, what is it? She asked with a big smile. I saw that I saw that performance. It was incredible. Where did you learn all that? Amari laughed. I know you've told me before, but I keep forgetting. I learned at the SSI, Serious Soul Inside. I gotta get to work, Zion. This, this is today's last show of the play, remember? And you need to rehearse, Siegfried. He laughed and walked off. Have fun! I usually do. Amari sighed when she sat down inside the box office. He is so dreamy, she whispered. She heard a giggle. She gasped and quickly turned. Amari, you think every guy is dreamy. Kai, wow! I haven't seen you in a while. She smiled at her before opening the tray and window for the box office. My shift starts in a few minutes. You need anything? Nope, everything is good. I'm helping you out in the box office. <laughs> it's pretty basic, Kai. She chuckled. I think I can handle it. Kai laughed as Amari turned and took money from their first customer. It picked up business within minutes. 
By the time they had to close up, every ticket was sold. Word got out that Amari gave her last performance. Almost every person congratulated her about going to Verol. Most of them told her a perfect job on her last performance. That definitely made her smile and brightened her day even more. She loved how everyone was proud of her. I can't believe they all did that! She counted up the money. Look at all this! Kai said. I know, she whispered. And a third of it are tips. Tips? Are you kidding? Amari squeaked. Every of those tippers said to use it for my trip to Varol. What can I say? You have devoted fans, Amari, and they want you to succeed. They smiled at each other in amazement. They still couldn't believe it. The extra, mon- the extra money Amari had earned came up to a total of 125 reins, equivalent to, t- to 200 American dollars. She brought it home with her to add to the rest of her travel money. When she got home a few hours later, her family made her sit in the living room. She didn't expect that. What's going on? Why is it we were the last to know you're leaving town? Her mother asked. Amari bit her lip nervously. Um, well, and Chandra Spiola gave me a new challenge. And, well, I was going to be late for my show. I had to hurry to the theater instead of here. What challenge? Her brother asked. She sighed before replying. Her family stared at her after the mention of the Enchantress. She said that my challenge is in Varol, that I have to gain the skills of fighting. She eyed them nervously. Her parents stared at her in shock, but her brother gasped in surprise. You're finally going to learn how to fight? He slowly said. That's awesome, Amari. Your dream of being a musketeer is finally within reach. He came up to her and hugged her tight. She giggled, hugging back. I'm so proud of you, sis, he whispered. Amari smiled. Thanks, Jalen, she said. She pulled away to glance at her parents. And you gotta look at this. She lifted the money. You see this? All this? Kai and I thought they were tips. Everyone kept saying how amazing my performance was. They wished me luck in Verol. Her eyes filled with happy tears. You guys know how important this dream is to me. As much as being a professional ballerina in theater. Why can't you be happy for me? It stayed quiet for some time. No one said a word. They knew she would do that. Amari was always dramatic. But she had it wrong. Her father clapped once and immediately the curtain fell. Happy travels! A chorus of people yelled in excitement. Amari laughed her tears as she wiped them dry. The in- their entire family stood all around them. They congratulated her. A celebration followed after that. She had a blast the entire time. It occurred to her that she loved every moment of the day passing, and every one. So much support and not one ounce of negativity was aimed at her. Amari never felt happier. After the celebrations ended, early in the evening, she packed for her adventure and headed to the train station. She hugged her parents and brother. They had brought her to the station so they could give one final goodbye. Happy and sad tears filled her eyes as she waved to them. All right, every day! I'll make you proud! She called out when the train rolled away. You always do, her parents whispered together. They smiled at each other. As the train chugged to Ando, Amari walked her luggage to a sleeping car. She had chosen a room to sleep in, since she knew it was going to be a long trip. The dancer bumped into a young woman of 22 annuals, wearing a blue day dress. She observed her after the bump. Oh, wow, I love that shade of blue, she complimented. 
thanks, the third adventurer said. She smiled faintly at Amari. Wait, I think I've seen you before. Oh, I'm a, I'm a dancer at Dolce du Qua. I actually had a performance today. The dancer smiled. I remember now. My dad got to see you perform, and I heard that music, and it struck a chord in me. I had to pull out my violin. Amari gasped. You're the violinist I heard? She squeaked with joy. Oh my gosh, I want to thank you so much. Your addition and that woman's singing gave it such a boost. It made me go all out, which everyone super loved. Our last show of the latest play sold out because of it. <laughs> wow, I guess we teamed pretty well, or rather brilliantly. I don't think I heard singing, though. That got Amari to chuckle. I suppose you wouldn't. I wonder if she's here, too. Should we try? I don't even know what she looks like. I know what her singing sounds like, though. Maybe it can help identify her speaking voice. They exchanged glances of excitement. The next second, they hurried to her cabin so she could put away her bag. The two then searched for the singer excitedly. <laughs> and that is where I'm going to stop. Papa. I am actually, that was actually a great reading. Um, I still need to work on not looking at the paper so much. I really need to improve that, considering I'm supposed to be a speaker for Special Olympics. I haven't done anything recently, which really frustrates me. I'm supposed to have, I'm supposed to have been interviewed, actually, and giving speeches and all that about, shoot, I'm screwed. <laughs> Anywho, I hope you all enjoyed the book, and there is still much more to come. I really think that you're going to enjoy these next two chapters, and I know I do. I love this book, and I'm really glad that I'm finally reading this, reading Musketeer Power to you all. So, I will see you all in the next video. I hope you all have a great morning, afternoon, evening, or night, wherever you are in the world. I am the, the Esperanza 2 for 3. <sighs> Signing out. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>